the bullies tie one end of the chain to the foundation of Kelly's trailer and the other end to the pickup truck. They drive forward to pull the supports out from underneath Kelly's trailer. The trailer suddenly lost its balance, causing Bernice, who is unwell, to roll off the couch to the floor, and the gas line is ripped off and starts leaking gas. Bernice tries to escape through the window, but she loses her balance due to a splitting headache and pushes over a lamp. The sparks from the lamp igniting the leaking gas and causing an explosion. By the time Kelly returns home from buying medicine, all he sees is a huge, burning fire. Without hesitation, he rushes into the fire and carries out his mother's body. However, his charred mother could no longer respond to him and protect him. Kelly has an emotional breakdown and is taken to the hospital where he starts eating up gauze again. Sheriff Adler has had a crush on his mom before, so he's willing to take the time to visit and comfort Kelly. Suddenly Red Elk shows up and asks for Adler's help. He wants Adler to team up with him to get Kelly's powers back. It turns out that they're both Indians, and they can sense the medicine in Kelly. It's just that Adler's been away from the residency for years, and he doesn't want to bother Kelly with all the folklore that's been passed down from his grandpa's grandpa's generation. Red Elk doesn't force him to take Kelly now, just says he'll wait for the day when Adler comes for him. The next morning, Adler picks up Kelly and goes to the cemetery for his mother's funeral. Dominique comes to comfort him and begs him not to move. But Kelly doesn't have any next of kin left, so he has to be sent to a social service organization. Driven by confusion and powerlessness, the two teens kiss. Dominique soon feels a little alarmed and says goodbye. Kelly then goes to Fluger's grave. He pulls a leaf from the vine covering Fluger's grave and eats it. Instantly, he feels a great deal of pain and weakness, and begins to puke. It looks like the vines can do damage to the invincible him. Dangerously, he doesn't realize that Sarah is watching from behind the tree. Adler finds him and promises to find him the best foster home. On the way to take Kelly to social services, Adler asks if he's done anything to the trailer lately. Adler thinks the fire is human-related, as he realizes that Kelly's trailer fell off its supports before the gas was ignited. Meanwhile, the bullies are on their way to the river for a fun trip. Reed suggests that they turn themselves into the police and say they thought the trailer was empty, so they pulled a prank. However, instead of feeling guilty, the other three call Kelly's mom mama trash. They run into Kelly, who is being escorted out of town by Sheriff Adler. So they make insulting gestures and behaviors towards Kelly. Kelly sees the provocation and realizes they had something to do with his mom's death. He becomes so angry that he opens the door of Adler's car and jumps out. He follows the bullies to a river, intent on avenging his mother's death. When he sees Tucker in the water, he sneaks up behind them and eats Tucker's clothes. He ties Tucker's shirt around his neck and strangles it. The pain of asphyxiation is transferred to Tucker's body by the reflection of his powers. Tucker struggles to breathe and dies of drowning. Kelly quickly regains his senses and plans to get back at the next bully. Unfortunately, Sheriff Adler finds them with the police. Kelly has little choice but to run away and leave them alone. News of Kelly murdering Tucker soon gets around the town. Dominique's mother keeps all the doors and windows closed for her in fear that Kelly will come looking for her. But Dominique doesn't think Kelly would be cruel enough to do such a thing. After her mother leaves, Dominique secretly opens the window. Not surprisingly, Kelly has been hiding behind a bush the whole time. She wonders what happened to Tucker at the river. Kelly doesn't say a word, just holds out his hand and invites her to take a walk with him. When Kelly reveals his plan for revenge, Dominique stops him from doing so. She doesn't want Kelly to be consumed by hate. She advises Kelly to just make the bullies confess. It would make his mom proud. The next day, in chemistry class, Kelly storms into the classroom and tries to piss Tony off. Yo, 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 I'm Tony Miller. I play a fool to get everyone's laughter, cause way deep down I'm just a white boy cracker. Nelson sees what Kelly's trying to do. He comes out to stop Tony from attacking Kelly because he knows Kelly has the power to bounce off hurt. Seeing that the two bullies still don't want to confess their mistakes, Kelly goes back to flirting with Sarah, who is Tony's girlfriend. Tony is furious and breaks free. He grabs some sulfuric acid and throws it in Kelly's face. Soon Tony's face begins to erode and he falls to the ground, foaming at the mouth. To take revenge on her boyfriend, Sarah kicks Kelly in the lower half of his body, but she's the one who feels the sharp pain of a male being kicked in the balls. Dominique accuses him of breaking his promise to use violence. Just as he announces that Nelson will be next, Sheriff Adler arrives in the classroom. Kelly has to run away first. In the middle of the night, Sarah drives up to Nelson to reveal her plan to fight back and avenge Tony's suffering. She saw Kelly's painful reaction to eating the vines at his mother's funeral. She thinks the vines can really hurt Kelly. So she takes Nelson to Fluger's graveyard to collect some weeds and vines. Nelson soaks them in a bathtub to make a solution. The next morning, Gus forces his two sons to come to the schoolyard for football practice. Sheriff Adler gets wind of this and comes to the school to protect them because he knows how scary Kelly's powers are. But Gus thinks he's making too much of a fuss. He's not afraid of a mealy-mouthed little kid. 
Adler is cruising around the playground when he notices a chain on the back of their pickup truck. Based on a brick tied to the chain, he figures it's what's supporting Kelly's trailer. So he finds Reed and Nelson to ask about the fire. Gus is always trying to get rid of Adler, regardless of whether or not his sons killed anyone. Kelly takes the opportunity to look in the back of the car for Nelson's belongings. To his further surprise, a power drill. He then shows up at the playground chewing on Nelson's clothes, holding up a power drill with the intention of carrying out his plan. As soon as Reed sees him, he swears he had nothing to do with his mom's death. Kelly knows that Reed has resisted them and lets him go. Meanwhile, Nelson raises a fire extinguisher and aims it at him. Kelly senses that something is wrong on the field and comes up with the biggest punishment for a football player. He picks up a drill and plunges it into his right knee. Nelson suddenly falls to the ground in agonizing pain. Then Kelly takes the drill and drills himself in the left knee. But no matter how much blood Nelson bleeds, he never admits to killing Kelly's mother. Dominique, who is on her morning jock, runs out to stop Kelly's madness. So Kelly pulls the drill out of his knee. Gus takes advantage of his distraction to run into the boy who's bullying his son. But it backfires. Nelson raises the fire extinguisher and sprays Kelly with fine liquid. Kelly feels weak and falls to her knees on the lawn, convulsing. Gus grabs the sheriff's gun and aims it at Kelly. Even when he hears that his son killed Kelly's mother, he feels no guilt. But as he pulls the trigger, both he and his son are shot with a hole in their foreheads. Kelly's wound quickly heals itself. To his dismay, Dominique, who has always been supportive of him, begins to blame him. She angrily yells how she hates the new Kelly who is driven to live by hate. Kelly doesn't want to be that weak, powerless, disliked person anymore. He doesn't want to give up that power. Dominique simply begs him to give this power back to Chief Red Elk or she will never be with him. Her words broke Kelly's heart. I love you. Without the understanding of the girl he loves, Kelly picks up the gun on the ground to say goodbye to the world. Adler grabs a fire extinguisher to stop him from being stupid. Adler then takes Kelly to the cemetery to find Red Elk. With Dominique's comfort and kisses, Kelly agrees to return his powers. The two of them cast a spell together in an attempt to transfer the powers from Kelly to Red Elk. Suddenly Kelly goes into convulsions. It turns out that Red Elk is trying to kill Kelly, because this mysterious power has been inside Kelly for too long. And now Red Elk can only get this power if Kelly is completely dead. Kelly breaks free from the handcuffs while he's talking and tries to escape with Dominique. However, the other cops shot them both. The impact is so strong that they fall into Fluger's grave. Kelly heals quickly because of his powers, but Dominique is not so lucky. She realizes how hypocritical these people are and begs Kelly not to give them back this power. In the end, Kelly could only watch as the girl who trusted him and helped him lost her breath. After losing the last person in the world who loved him, he angrily blames Fluger for all the origins of his miserable fate. He doesn't want anyone else to have this power, so he consumes Fluger's heart, intending to die along with the evil, even though Kelly loses her breath. Unfortunately Red Elk doesn't get Kelly's power. As the cops are taking the two teens to the funeral home, Dominique suddenly sits up. Miraculously, she comes back to life. As she touches her healing wounds, she utters one of Kelly's pet phrase. Man, that itches. Man, that itches. Do you think it is Dominique or Kelly who comes back to life at the end of the movie? This is a sci-fi film about anti-bullying in schools called The Unhealer. Kelly is bullied and called Trash Boy by his classmates because he likes to eat things we consider trash. The mysterious power of the Indians gives him the power to heal himself and bounce off hurt. The bullied and weak boy is no longer afraid of being hurt and has regained his self-confidence. Although Kelly seldom picks on others with his powers, most of the time he is attacked by the bullies, but the hurt bounces off them. However, after the bullies accidentally burn his mother to death, Kelly is still the one blamed, and the others blame him for being a freak instead of looking for the murderer. From then on, the boy with superpowers loses his mind, and his behavior changes from fighting back out of righteousness to sinfulness. If Kelly is denied protection and help because of the leniency of the adults and the police, is it wrong for him to rely on himself and try to carry out justice on his own? If he is not wrong to do so, then how far should he go before he becomes worse than his arrogant persecutors and calls it quits? If you were in his shoes, would you be able to get over your hatred and start a new life after receiving these injuries? This is Rainbow Movie. If there's a movie you'd like to watch, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Let's watch a movie together and experience something different. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.